friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow. Um, I just thought I would get on really quick and talk about some of my favorites from the month of March. Uh, March was a really, really busy month for me. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned in every video that I've done for the past month and a half that my kitchen was remodeled and I got new flooring throughout the rest of my house. And so uh, my entire house had to be just completely dismantled basically um it was in kind of a shambles but that's over and everything is slightly back to normal now uh it's still a little bit of a mess i don't have everything put away yet but um it's at least to the point where construction is done and i can live in my house and i'm sort of taking my time trying to get everything put back away again but so despite the busyness that that ended up being uh i still did some fun stuff in the month of march and um had some fun things that i wanted to talk about so i thought i'd start first by talking about sort of tarot and um you know cardmancy related stuff and so the first thing i wanted to mention is my favorite deck that i got during the month of march which is the dark mansion tarot which i absolutely love and i actually i really wasn't sure when that deck first came out that it was for me i remember when i first started seeing you know pictures of it when it was sort of in a more of a pre-sale mode um i started seeing pictures on facebook and on instagram and just thinking you know i don't know that that one's for me um it feels kind of like a little bit close to a big head big eyes deck which i've talked about before i'm not a huge fan of decks like the chicoli or decks like the beautiful creatures um and you know even though this one has a little bit more of like a tim burton kind of feel but i was sort of like oh you know is it more gonna feel kind of cartoon um, I don't I just wasn't sure if I was gonna like it um, but then I started seeing it on people's um, YouTubes and on Instagrams after people started actually receiving the deck and I just every additional picture that I saw of it I fell a little bit more in love with it and so I finally broke down and ordered it not too long ago actually I think I ordered it sometime in January and so I got it um, in like early early mid-March I guess so I've been working with it with a, for a couple weeks and I really really love it and I know everybody's seen it already but I'll just show off a few cards um, it's just a really really wonderful deck the quality of it is amazing I just got the regular edition um, you know which is a normal size and comes in a clamshell box and it's got the black edges which I actually really love um, but even just the regular edition is just stunning quality the cardstock is wonderful the print quality is wonderful it shuffles beautifully uh, it's just a really really wonderful deck so I've just been really enjoying this one it just um, it's it's whimsical it has a good sense of humor it it feels kind of dark but in a whimsical way you know and I just I really really like it like I love this death card he's just like so weary so many souls to bring to the underworld um but anyway it's just it's a really wonderful deck it has kind of a storybook sort of quality to it and I've just been really really loving that one so so that's cool the other thing that I did in March is I actually got my first ever Lenormand deck I got the um the Anna K Lenormand am I holding that right side up or Yes. Um, and so, uh, so I haven't done any reading with it yet and I haven't gotten a book yet cause I know that I'm going to need to get an actual book to learn, um, how to work with these. But, um, I just, I decided that I would go ahead and order her, her deck cause I love her artwork and I love the feeling of her artwork and it feels just very homey and every day. Um, and I decided that as long as she still had, you know, copies of her self-published decks available that I would go ahead and pick up this one as my first Lenormand. So I still have to learn how to read with it. It's got basically the same sun and moon cards, or similar, not quite the same, um, as in her tarot. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about learning to work with this one. It's it's something that's brand new to me. Um, you know, it's really funny. I've, I have read tarot for so long and it isn't until the last just couple of years that I've sort of gotten more involved in the online community or following along with the online community and even realized that there were 
other cardamantic systems that existed in the world. Like I only started getting into Oracle decks in like the past year. Sorry, I've got a cat bothering me down here. Um, didn't know anything about Lenormand, didn't know anything about Kipper or Sibylla or any of the other um, kinds of systems that are out there. So that was all just very new to me. And for a while I was sort of like, you know, very much kind of staying in my comfort zone of tarot and of just Rider Waite Smith based tarot. Um, and and I, you know, that's still definitely, again, my comfort zone and where I, um, you know, feel the most adept. And it, you know, if I'm going to read for another person, obviously those, that's the system that I'm going to use. But um, being able to start getting into some of these other cardamantic systems and start learning a little bit about them um, is, is just sort of a goal for me for this year. So um, I'd really like to, to just at least start understanding a little bit more about them. And so, um, so yeah, so buying my first, uh, first Lenormand deck was definitely part of that. So I'm very, very excited. And I just, I love Anna Kay's work. I love um, the quality of her self-published decks. And I just, I wanted to order it from her. So I decided that that's what I was gonna do. So um, in terms of tarot books, uh, I read this month Tarot Elements by Melissa Sonova. Um, she is just one of my favorite tarot authors. Um, her book Kitchen Table Tarot is like the number one book that I've started recommending to new tarot readers because she just has this incredible ability to write descriptions of the cards in such a way that they stick in your head. They are really well personified. They're very vivid. They're very um, down to earth. And so I've just found that, you know, even though I read some cards differently than the way that she reads them, in a, in a lot of cases, um, you know, her description of a card will be uh, some words that stick in my head or a phrase or an idea about how to in interpret that card that I find really just, um, it's so intuitive that it really kind of sticks with you. And so I, that's why I think that her, her books are, uh, her, or her book at least, um, Kitchen Table Tarot, which was her first book, is just a fantastic beginner book. And also because it's, um, it's a good like cover to cover read. You know, when I first started learning tarot, the main book that I got was Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning which I also think is a great book um, because it has, the way that it also describes cards I think is really, really effective in that it gives you, you know, key, different keywords and key phrases going along with all of the different, um, you know, possible ways of interpreting a, a tarot card. So I think that's a really great book, but it feels more like a textbook, you know? It's not, it's, it's kind of dry, it's not super engaging. It has a wealth of information, but um, Melissa's books are, the voice of them is so friendly and funny and engaging that I think that they're just, they're a good cover to cover read. So um, so this one I really enjoyed. I have not actually started doing any of the readings yet. So the premise of this book is that um, it basically gives you different readings to go along with different elements. And so each of that reading is basically designed to help you address a certain area of your life. So the fire reading is all about your physical health. The earth reading is all about your physical surroundings, like your home um, and, and money and things like that. You know, there's a, an air reading, which is all about your mind. And then there is a water reading, which is all about your emotions. And so it's basically just geared toward, you know, using these readings and each one of them, the spread is kind of based on the elemental symbol for that element. And, um, and sort of using those readings to just address different um, areas of your life and, you know, just sort of be able to move forward or recast the way that you think about things or, I mean, as, as the subtitle of the book is five readings to reset your life. So it's really about sort of, you know, kind of getting a deeper understanding of what's going on in that area of your life and figuring out where you might need to make changes. So, you know, again, her voice um, in this uh, book is, again, chatty, funny, you know, so easy to read and connect with, and it's it's really, really great. I'm, I want to do a more in-depth review of this book after I've had a chance to actually um, dive in and do some of the readings, but just as a read, it's a good read. And then in the back of the book, um, she does do, um, you know, just a, a, an appendix that has sort of short uh, descriptions of all of the card meanings, um, which, you know, it's similar to what she has in Kitchen Table Tarot. It's not exactly the same. You know, there's some slightly different wording and stuff like that, but um, but it is definitely similar. Um, but it is nice that that was, you know, still included in this book, so you can actually, 
you know, use this book as a standalone if you're not very experienced with tarot and still have a pretty good resource on what the meanings of the cards are. So, so this was good. And again, I do, I do want to do a more in-depth um, discussion and review of it once I have a chance to really work with, um, work with some of the readings. But, but it, you know, it's a really fun read. So um, that I will I can definitely easily say that it's a very fun read. So, um, in terms of books as well, I have a kind of funny story. Um, about another new book that I got myself. So um, earlier, I think it was earlier in March, or it might have been late February, I'm not exactly sure, but Lisa from Supportive Tarot did a video where she talked about unicorns and like her working with unicorn magic, unicorn energy, um, and she showed some of the different like books and tools and things that she used for working with unicorns. Um, and so one of the things that she showed was this book that I totally freaked out when I saw it because I realized that the book had images that I had been looking at constantly since I was a kid. And just, just to explain, so the book that she showed was this book and it's Unicornus on the History and Truth of the Unicorn. And it's by, um, uh, by Michael Green, I think is his name. Um, Yes, it's by Michael Green. Um, and it's it's basically designed, this book, to look like it's a medieval manuscript. It has these sort of parchment pages and it's designed to feel like it's a factual treatise on, uh, on unicorns written in medieval times. Um, so it's really, really cool. I mean, it's a really cool book. So she shows this book. I didn't have this at the time. She showed it in her video and I freaked out because I have had this since I was a kid, and this is a postcard book, Unicorn Postcard Book by Michael Green, Running Press, 1986. I've had this since I was eight years old. Um, and it has all of the same images as the book that she had showed. And I had never known, I, I, like, I was given this as a gift when I was a kid. It's a, it's a book of postcards. Like, you're supposed to tear these out and send them. Obviously, I never did because I could not bear to part with a single one of these postcards. I just kept it as a book and just looked through it all the time at these beautiful, beautiful paintings that were in this postcard book. But I never knew that the illustrations were from an actual book that this guy, Michael Green, had created. And so when Lisa showed off the book, I was like, oh my God, I must have this book because I've been treasuring this book of postcards since I was eight years old and I had no idea that the images in it were from an actual book. So I immediately went out and found a copy of the book and you can see, you know, it's, it's an older copy, like it's not in the best condition. I just bought it used on Amazon because um, I don't think this is in print anymore. Um, but, uh, but, but I found it and I was so excited. So that now I've, I actually have the book and I've read the book and it's like, it's so awesome and beautiful and it has beautiful, bigger images of all of those paintings from the postcards that I'd had since I was a kid. So I was so thrilled. And then I got the book and, and was like, oh, well, what should I do with this postcard book then, I guess? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with my old postcard book. Like, I don't want to get rid of it or anything, but, you know, I, I have this, the actual book now with all of, with bigger versions of all of the pictures. And then I was like, self, I said, self, your main hobby is cardamancy and you're literally asking yourself, oh, what should I do with a stack of cards? Um... That's ridiculous. So I'm pretty sure that what I'm actually going to do with this is make it like take the cards out and make it into a deck of some kind. I haven't entirely decided how I'm going to do that or I, I just I need to give it more thought. But clearly that's what's screaming out to happen here is for this to turn into some kind of deck. Like it freaks me out a little bit still to think about tearing the cards out of this book because I've kept it this way for so many years and I've been so careful since I was a tiny kid not to let any of these like perforations <laughs> come apart and let any of these cards come out. Like look how pretty they are. They're so pretty. But like obviously this needs to be a deck, right? Like that's what it's that's what it was supposed to be. That's why I've hung on to this for however many years since 1986. Like that's what this is meant to be. So um, so anyway, so I'll keep you updated on what I end up doing with this, but clearly it's got to turn into a deck of some kind. 
Like, that's just completely obvious that that's the answer to what I do with this. So anyway, so that was kind of a cool random thing um, that, uh, you know, I just total blast from the past, you know, had this moment of seeing these images in this book that that Lisa was showing in her video and just freaking out because that was the those are from the postcard book that I've literally treasured since the age of eight. Um, and I had no idea that they were from an actual book that I now have. So it's super awesome. So thanks Lisa for showing that because it just was so exciting for me. It was so cool. Um, so what else went on in March? So, oh, other things that went on in March having to do with uh, tarot is I did actually do my first ever swap um, with somebody in the community and that was with um, Ash formerly, uh, she was known as the Tarot Yogi. She's changed the name of her channel to Inner Divine Tarot. She's super awesome. Her videos are awesome. I love her channel. Um, she's just, she's a really, really fun voice and great content. So, um, so we did a swap because I was looking to swap my beautiful Rebellion Tarot and um, she sent me in exchange the first edition of the Connected and Free Oracle, um, which I already have the second edition of the Connected and Free, but there are some cards that I prefer in the first edition, so I'm probably going to sort of take them and make a sort of mega deck, connected and free kind of mega deck of the car cards that are unique to each edition. Um, so I'll probably talk more about that at some point or do a video on that. But um, the other thing that she sent me though, along with the um, along with the deck, is she sent me this beautiful crystal, uh, um, Lemurian quartz crystal, which is so gorgeous and it's just one of those ones like I have a lot of crystals I don't know very much about them like I'm not super educated on them for the most part I keep crystals because they um they're pretty and I like how crystals have different meanings and I feel like from a sort of mental perspective in terms of like setting intentions and a reading and stuff like that the meaning of the crystals can really help you keep those things in mind in terms of like crystal healing and crystal grids and all that stuff, I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. It's, um, I, I've, I feel like I have this sort of very kind of amateurish um, understanding of crystals, but um, but I love them. And so, and this one is just particularly beautiful and it's just one of those ones that felt special as soon as I looked at it. Hi, apparently my kitty likes it too. Hello. Um, so anyway. So I really love this. So thank you so much, Ash. I just, I love this. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful gift to include along with my new Oracle deck. So, um, other things. Oh, books that I've read in, um, aside from the, uh, the Unicorn book and the Tarot Elements book, um, I also reread this month the book American Gods by Neil Gaiman because the show came back. Um, American Gods, the book, is one of my absolute absolute favorite books. I can't imagine that there are very many people watching this who haven't heard of it or read it. Um, but uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a brilliant book about how, um, you know, the premise is that when immigrants came to America, um, they brought their gods along with them. So gods or folk heroes or, um, or, you know, supernatural beings, the fairies, pic pixies, um, leprechauns, you know, all came along with them. But then over time, you know, people stopped believing in those things in America in the same way that they believed in them back in the old country. And so basically once the gods were here, they all kind of like lost all their believers and were sort of left at loose ends. So the premise is that, you know, there's these new gods that have arisen in America, and, you know, the gods of the internet, gods of television, gods of highways, gods of, uh, of, of, of airplanes, gods of drugs, you know, all of these different things are what we, what we worship now. And the premise is that there's this, gonna be this war between the old gods that, uh, you know, that came over with immigrants to America and we're sort of ended up getting stuck here and the new gods um, that are the gods that we, we kind of worship today. Um, so really, really fantastic book. It's one of my all time favorite books. Um, the show did come back. I have very mixed feelings about the show actually. So I have been watching it. Um, and so that's another thing that I have been watching in March. I haven't actually watched a ton of TV or movies or anything at all just because I've been so busy with house stuff. But, um, but that is one of the things that I have been watching. And it's just a, it's a weird, um, sort of reaction that I have to that show because, um, it's a show on stars and it's, the, it's one of those situations where the storyline is 
very similar to the books. Like it's, it basically follows the same storyline as the books and it has the same characters. There are some digressions, but for the most part, it's the same. Um, but the tone of it is just so different. The book American Gods has such a quiet tone. It feels a little bit bleak in a lot of ways. Um, it's very interior to the head of, of this brain of this character, the main character, who is one of those guys who just does not react strongly to anything and sort of just, he's been in prison, so he, he's very kind of um, committed to just keeping his head on straight and getting through life and not overreacting or causing problems or making waves or, you know, he just kind of wants to get through life in as quiet a way as possible. And then he gets involved in this whole big conflict. But, you know, because of the character and how you're inside his head for most of the book, everything comes across in a very matter of fact way, in a very quiet way, a way where he's not projecting strong emotional reactions to things. And so the book itself is, a, even though it's got this very kind of, you know, sort of wildly supernatural plot to it, the the feel of the book is very quiet. The show, on the other hand, feels totally different. It was done by Brian Fuller, um, who is also who did shows like Pushing Daisies and Hannibal. And while I really love him as a showrunner, if you've watched any of his other shows, what you know is that he goes for strong visuals, bright colors. It just, the show doesn't feel like how the book feels to me. It feels really different. And so, I sort of like it as its own thing, but then it also, there are times when it's sort of like trying a little too hard to remind you that it's a stars show where the violence is a little bit gratuitous and kind of gross. So I'm sort of so-so on the show, but it, again, it's one of my absolute 100% favorite books. So, um, so there is that as well. So that is another thing that I did read um, during the month of March. The last thing that I wanted to talk about from the month of March is that another thing that I always have going on that I've talked about many times is I do sing in a choir and we're doing um, some really, really interesting music for our uh, concert in May. Um, and there's this one really incredible piece that I just wanted to share with folks because I think it's really amazing and it seemed like the kind of thing that might be of interest to people um, in this community and it's a it's a piece of music called Leonardo Dreams of His Flying Machine and it's by a choral composer named Eric Whitaker and this piece of music is really amazingly beautiful um, and it, it, it's about Leonardo da Vinci and it's about um, him you know inventing a flying machine which as we all know is something that Leonardo really did and then in the end he dreams of flying in the machine and so the end of the piece of music is all the flight that he takes in his flying machine in his dream and it's just really incredible so what I'm gonna do is I'll link um, I'll link the uh, a YouTube video of that piece of music down below just so you guys can check it out if you're interested because that's I'm like obsessed with it right now and it's been stuck in my head different parts of this it's a very long piece of music it's seven or eight minutes long um, and different parts of it have been stuck in my head at like various points all month long because that's what my choir has been working on and um, and it's really quite incredible so if you're interested in choral music modern choral music interesting music music about a, a cool topic like Leonardo da Vinci and his flying machine um, then it might be something that you might be interested in checking out so I thought I'd share so that's it for me in the month of March um, I'm really glad it's April it's finally starting to be spring here in uh, Minnesota where I am. It takes a while for it to finally become spring. We had a lot of snow this winter, but it's finally all melted. You're, I'm finally starting to hear sounds that you don't hear in the winter, like bird song and the sound of melting water flowing, <laughs> which you never hear in the winter here because everything's frozen. And, uh, and it's just starting to feel like spring. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Um, happy April, it's finally spring and uh, my house is already done and I can finally get back to normal life. So I'm really happy about that. So anyway, thanks so much. Have a great one, bye-bye.